Hi, my name is Dr. Margaret Hale and this is a video for SEDE 4312. This is a brief video where we're going to talk about reader response theory and the English classroom. So I want you to think for a few minutes. Um, think about your high school or even your college English classes. Take a minute and think about what kinds of things did you do in those classes. And we're going to talk about that in light of um, two theories, one called old criticism and one called new criticism. So pause the recording for just a minute and think about those English classes and what you were asked to do in them. So now that you've thought about that, um, I want to talk to you about these two theories just for a minute. So old criticism is a kind of criticism um, related to the teaching of English um, and when, in, when teachers teach using or operating out of this research base, they're having you think about everything that's outside the text. So they have you analyze a piece of literature based on things outside the text, for example, um, the author's personal life, the cultural or societal climate of the time, the political climate of the time, um, what was going on in terms of religion. So they analyze texts based on things that were occurring outside of the text that might have impacted it. New criticism it's another theoretical stance for analyzing literature and when teachers are operating out of that stance they're having you look at a piece of literature and analyze it based on everything that's inside the text so um, metaphors imagery word choice or diction sensory language that kind of thing that's the way you're analyzing or responding to a piece of text um, but the work that we've been doing in this class we're operating more from another theoretical stance um, I tend to teach um, and this is what I encourage you to do using um, what's known as reader response theory so reader response theory was first posited or theorized by a woman named Louise Rosenblatt way back in the 1940s and her theory differed from both new criticism and old criticism in that it did not neglect either the reader or the text. The reader and the text are both critical in reader response theory and it is considered a transactional theory of reading. Um, so here's a graphic that represents Rosenblatt's reader response theory. So when you look at this graphic, you see the text, the reader, and the writer. Okay. So what Rosenblatt believed was that um, the, the writer creates the text, and then the reader co-creates the meaning of that text. What that means is that each one of us as a reader brings to a text slightly different inter or, or backgrounds. We all have different background experiences and so anytime we go to read a text we take out um, meaning from it that are uh, minimally different from everybody else's and that's because of our own background experience. If you think it's similar to the process of making an inference. When we infer, we match what we see in the text with what we know, what prior knowledge we already have in our head. So if you think about reader response theory in that vein, you can see how we all take slightly different shades of meaning from a common text and it's because of the background experiences we bring to it. Rosenblatt also talked about the reading stances that we take when we approach reading. Um, she said the reading process is a transaction between self and text or the reader and the text and what she said is that when we approach a text we approach it from one of two stances. Um, on the far left side of this graphic you see the efferent stance. So efferent comes from the Latin effere, which means to take away. So if you approach a text with an efferent stance, you're approaching it with the idea of taking something away. So when I sit down with a cookbook, I am approaching that cookbook from an efferent stance, meaning I want to take away some meaning, it's usually a recipe. Okay? If I'm sitting down to read a professional book about teaching reading, 
that I'm approaching it from the standpoint of wanting to take away some knowledge about teaching reading. The other side of the graphic over here, this is the aesthetic stance of, that we sometimes take to reading. So aesthetic um, is all about the beauty or the pleasure. So, we, so when we approach a reading task from the aesthetic stance, we're reading it simply for the pleasure of it. What uh, Rosenblatt talked about in the middle is what she termed the elegant solution. Um, so for many of us, when we sit down to read um, a professional book, Yes, we're approaching it from an efferent stance, but we also get a lot of pleasure out of it. So we're taking meaning away, we're taking new knowledge away, but we're also getting pleasure out of that reading. That's what she would call the elegant solution. Sometimes that happens when, we're, uh, when we approach something from an aesthetic stance. So having been an English teacher for many years, anytime I sit down to read um, a piece of literature, a new book, whether it's young adult literature or children's literature, um, I sit down with the intention of reading it just for pleasure, but at the same time, my English teacher brain kicks in and I'm constantly thinking about, ooh, I could use this line to teach this, or I could use this as a mentor text for this particular standard. So I'm taking away ideas for how I can use that book to teach. Also an elegant solution. So I want you to continue thinking about reader response and how that shows up in your teaching of English. If you'd like to learn more about Rosenblatt, on this slide, um, uh, Rosenblatt um, lived until um, to, to the ripe old age of 100. Um, in her either 99th or 98th year, um, she came and uh, spoke in a general session at the National Council of Teachers of English Convention. Just so you get a sense of the impact she has had on the teaching of English over the years, she spoke to a packed room of hundreds of English teachers and English educators. Um, it, was, it was pretty impressive to see how many people were there to hear her speak. Um, but uh, soon after, NCTE's journal, Voices from the Middle, they did a themed issue um, remembering Louise Rosenblatt. Um, Kyleen Beers was serving as the editor at the time. And so this slide right here is a link to this issue of Voices from the Middle that is on the National Council of Teachers of English website. So the PowerPoint will be posted in Blackboard if you would like to look at some of the articles. So all kinds of people in the field of English education contributed articles about Louise Rosenblatt and her impact on their careers to this particular volume or issue of Voices from the Middle. Thanks for tuning in. There will be um, more about this in class.